Hi, I'm Michael Wilkinson. I'm the costume designer for Jingle Jangle. I heard about the film through my agents. They sent me the script for Jingle Jangle, and uh, it really intrigued me straight off the bat. Uh, I liked the idea of this um, sort of 19th century musical holiday movie, uh, peopled by really interesting cast members. They told me that the casting was going to be very diverse, and so that really piqued my interest. I think when I first met David and Lynn, I was so impressed by their passion and their openness, uh, the, the trust that they had in the, their, um, their team members. Uh, they really wanted it to be very special and, and uh, something that audiences hadn't seen before, and that really uh, appealed to me to try and come up with costumings that were was, uh, as, as original as the story was original. This sort of fusion of 19th century African culture, world costuming, a musical stylization, all of these elements really got me excited. The first thing that we wanted to decide on was exactly when the film was being set. It was not really specified in the script. And in a sense, it's sort of fantastical, so we didn't have to lock it into a specific year. But we decided it was very important for, to tell the story of 30 years passing in the story. So we decided we would start the film in 1860 and end it in the 1890s. Uh, and I'm so in love with the silhouettes of both of those periods. They're really extraordinary, wonderful um, Victorian silhouettes, the big skirts, the wonderful hats, all the beautiful tailoring. Uh, they're quite different from each other, so it really gave us a chance to build two kind of separate worlds and show the passing of time, show Geronicus aging. Uh, and so I wanted to combine an incredible tailoring from the 19th century with these beautiful fabrics that I sourced from all around the world to create costumes that were sort of a little bit unlike um, costumes that we've seen before. With the character of Geronicus, we see him as a young man in his 30s, and then we see him 30 years later. So we wanted to show the passing of time, how his the sort of color had been sucked out of his world. He's had living with personal tragedies, and how that's kind of reflected in his, in his costume. So when we see the young Geronicus, he's very vibrant, he's quirky, he's full of life and passion. He's been sort of on tough times, but he's got this invention and it's going to turn everything around. So he's very optimistic and positive. Um, and so then when we see Geronicus 30 years later, it's very similar silhouette and patterns, but I've pulled all of the color out. So we've made uh, fabrics using braids and trims, but we use very colorful version in the first version, and then we do a, a washed out version for Forrest when he's older. Having said that, we still wanted to keep the quirk and the spark and the sort of visual interest in the character. You know, he's not completely dead. There's like a, there's an inner life to him that's just waiting to be ignited. So we also wanted to express that with his costumes. For the character of Journey, I fell in love with her straight away when I read about her on the page of the script. She's a real one of a kind. I knew I would have fun creating a look for her that was somewhat ahead of her time. The film that she, the part of the film that she's set in is the 1890s, but she's a real pioneer, and so she kind of has this, she has interesting knitwear, uh, things that w could have been possible in the 1890s, but would have been quite cutting edge, like all these fun knitwear, her use of color and contrasting materials is quite uh, revolutionary and out of the box. Um, we created a beautiful suede jacket for her that sort of sets her up as this wonderful Amelia Earhart sort of adventurous kind of a person. Um, we thought that she should have the silhouette of the 1890s of a full skirt, but we've actually created like a, a sort of a split skirt. They're almost like the world's first culottes uh, that we've created for her, which give her the silhouette, but allow her to move through the world and nothing stops her. She's not restrained by any, uh, any of her clothes. The character of Edison is also a lot of fun. He's a young chap who uh, is kind of dressed by his mother. He's a bit of a mother's boy, uh, but his uh, sense of fashion is quite fun. We combine lots of good, great colors together. He also has some lovely knitwear that we created for him. Um, he's kind of like our young Dapper Dan. He's sort of, we thought we, he might be the pioneer of geek chic. So he's got his little glasses. He's got this lovely sort of preppy style. Um, lots of lovely combinations of colors and textures. So I had a lot of fun with him. Gustafsson is another character that we see both as a young man and then 30 years later. Uh, when we see him at first, he is the assistant of Geronicus, so he's uh, a little downtrodden in the, in the shadow of the genius. Uh, and then later, 30 years later, he's like a full-blown um, uh, extrovert. He has this very flashy way of presenting himself to the world. He's kind of the showman. Uh, in the movie, he 
presents these wonderful inventions to the um, to his buyers, and so he's in full on sort of performance mode. So we created um, our own textures and fabrics for him, lots of embroideries. We wanted to keep it a little grounded at the same time. We didn't want to get carried away with a lot of flash and glitz. You know, we wanted to key in with the rest of the vibe of the film, which is more, um, you know, we use very sort of what we call soulful fabrics, fabrics that are sort of vintage African textiles, textiles from all around the world that have lovely embroideries and patterns and color combinations. So we kind of took that as a starting point and really ran with it. So we embellished things, uh, we found beautiful, um, colorful fabrics, uh, we created these wonderful capes for him for when he's presenting. He has a kind of James Brown kind of vibe to him. Uh, so he was lots of fun to, to create a, a wardrobe for. One of my favorite scenes in the film is the, the buyer's scene when Gustafsson is presenting his ill-fated uh, invention. Um, we wanted to really had this sense that the buyers have come from all around the world to look at this um, potential thing that they were going to buy for their stores. And so uh, I found all of these beautiful fabrics. Most of them are sort of from African heritage, wonderful prints and things that have a little bit of sort of Victorian geometry to them, but with this wild um, African flair to them. So we made a lot of the women's costumes out of that. The men have wonderful plaid um, suiting and wonderful combinations of colors and things, also quite flashy. So we wanted to, each of them has a sort of a sense of their own ethnicity, where they might have come from, from around the world, but in a fun sort of mixing pot, wild stylized kind of a way. I think if I had to describe the overall approach to the costuming, it would be taking things from history, from the 19th century when the film is set, but making them appealing, eye-catching uh, to modern, modern audiences. So we've combined incredible, complex 19th century tailoring, these wonderful silhouettes that you see in all of the paintings and prints and historical documents, photos from the period. But we've rendered them in wonderfully fresh fabrics. They're full of color and life. We've created our own fabrics. Uh, so hopefully it's, it creates something that audiences haven't really seen before. When I first met with David and Lynn, they really let me know that they just wanted me to have fun with this film, to take everything I've learned in my career to date and to sort of take it all to the next level, to sort of be really fearless with all of my choices, to surprise them with the costumes, to charm them, uh, to create images that would be very entertaining, a film that we wanted the whole families to enjoy together and uh, be enthralled by what they saw. So we wanted to keep it grounded, soulful, you know, fun, but not too flashy, never cheesy, always kind of with this sort of sense of, um, you know, that these characters would have like a sense of inner pride and warmth and appeal to them and uh, really jump off the screen. We had a, a lovely long prep for this film, so we were really able to dive deep into our research and to our concepting and our illustrations to sort of really set up a world that was unique for the film and specific. One of the really fun things for a costume designer when they're working on a musical is to collaborate with the choreographer. In pre-production, we talk a lot about the movement, the shapes, the sort of scenes that we want to create uh, in the film. There's about four or five pretty major dance scenes uh, in this film. Uh, and so we wanted each one to have a specific look. Uh, and so we talked with the director, the choreographer, the production designer, myself, the, 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 um, the DOP. Uh, so we, we talked about how we wanted to create these separate looks, different color palettes for them all. There are a couple of fun details that I feel the audience should look out for when they see the film. I tried to kind of put as much wit and quirk into as many moments as possible uh, for the film. So examples of this are um, when we first um, see Journey, she's wearing a purple uh, jacket that she travels to see her grandfather in. And uh, David wanted something sort of customized and unique uh, about the jacket. So I sort of uh, embellished it with lots of different um, washers and little bits from around her workshop that she would have found, cogs and things like that. So, and we had an embroiderer spend a couple of days embroidering the jacket. So it's a very customized look for her. 
You know, I'm so excited about this film. I've done a lot of uh, films and musicals in my career, but this one really, I feel, is quite special. It's got a lot of soul, a lot of heart, uh, of course, lots of color and, and fun and, and life to it. But I feel like this one's a bit special. You know, it, it, we, we're seeing characters and faces that we haven't really seen before uh, as musicals. I feel like it's gonna really, uh, you know, connect with people all around the world. I think it's great that this film will also be a sort of family event movie. It's something that the parents will enjoy. It's something that the kids will enjoy. I feel like there's, there's sort of something for everyone. The music, the choreography, the story, the characters. There's so much there all packed into this tight little film. I think it should be a really special film going experience.